right guys, Good boy 32 here, check it out. So this is the uh, first step in our series of tests between the, let's say, the cheap versus expensive. And I don't want to say cheap anymore, I want to say budget. A budget competition rifle versus a full-blown, all-out competition rifle. They're both, in my mind, and I've test fired them and I have zeroed them in, they are both uh, very well suited for a three gun. Uh, they are all coming in and what I'm doing right now is I'm taking this opportunity to put some copper in these barrels before we do the accuracy test. But this is the first one. This is a recoil test. So what we're looking at is, like I said before, the round goes off. The first thing that takes effect is you've got gas running back in the chamber. The second thing is, is that we've got mitigation of recoil and muzzle rise on the muzzle brake. Then what happens is that we have a bolt carry group that comes back and that gives you a reciprocating force back and forth. That's where we get a lot of our recoil. So what we're going to do, I've got 55 frame, this is 5.56. Five, got a couple cameras setting up here. We're going to do a Jeremy type test. I'm going to go ahead and shoot this thing. This again, this is using the Palmetto State Army 3.5 pound. And let's do it. We're going to do a best of five, shall we? Here we go. Yep, let's go ahead and release the bolt. And this is the best as I can do uh, <laughs> with what I have. Here we go. That wasn't bad. That looks to be right on board three quarters of an inch. Right at three quarters of an inch, maybe a little less. All right, let's go ahead and load it up again. And you know what? It'd be interesting to see if there's a difference in recoil when you go to lock back versus recoil and another round going up into the So this time, let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and load up two rounds and let's see how much difference there is on the back and forth versus one that goes into a lock back. Here we go. All right, well that one, right at just about a little tad over uh, three quarters of an inch. Let's go ahead and fire off that last one. Here we go. So that was just a hair under uh, three quarters of an inch. Let's go ahead and what do we need? Two more. So I think we're averaging out about three quarters of an inch on this thing. I'll be honest with you. This is a uh, this is a great shooting rifle. The ergonomics are best, uh, uh, as good as I can get. This grip, surprisingly, after I started working with it, is very comfortable. This is that adjustable. What do they call this guy? It's X Tear X Tech. Very nice and comfortable. Very slim. Now that we're wearing in a good flat spot for the all-out gun. Okay. Yeah, so that one's uh, seven eighths. Yeah, I think what we're doing is we're wearing a nice smooth spot out on this thing. Let's see what this one does. Yep, nope. That was a three quarters of an inch. I think we got one more. Nope, that was it. All right, so let's go ahead, bring the full Monty out here and see how she does. So on average, I'm gonna say three quarters of an inch, but I will tell you, this rifle, it shoots absolutely reliable, and uh, I can't wait to show you guys how accurate they are. Let's get full Monty out here and see how she works. All right, here's Monty. <laughs> She's affectionately known as Monty. Go ahead and put her in there. Let's go ahead and check this out. Now, this muzzle brake, this is the Ultradyne muzzle brake. This is the either the Apollo S or uh, the Max. But I, I will tell you this, I'll be interested in seeing because felt recoil, when I was zeroing in these optics, this, this thing just felt like it didn't have any recoil at all. But, you know, who knows? So here we go, first time. All right. So roughly about three-eighths of an inch. Oh, yeah. 
Go ahead and bring her back up. There we go. One more time. That's just under a half inch. Whew. The way that those uh, veins or these <laughs> these uh, baffles or whatever you want to call these things that are set up in this muzzle brake, that stuff is hitting right at, at me. So this one, one half of an inch. Here we go. One half of an inch, maybe less. Yeah, because if I hold it square with that. Ah. Like, I don't even want to pull the damn thing because it hurts so much. All right, that one's a good one. That one's right at about three-eighths of an inch. Oh, that was it. All right, well guys, you let me know what your thoughts are on this test. I think that this was a good way to get a good look at uh, what happens from the time you pull the trigger, your round, muzzle brake, gas, bolt carrier, back, and the low mass operating system. Whew. All right guys, so the next part we're gonna do is I've got Two individual targets downrange, 10 yards away. They each have five one-inch dots on them. And what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna demonstrate double taps because that's what you're gonna be doing at targets when you're shooting three-gun. And of course, these are our three-gun competition rifles. Now, this guy's equipped with the one to six from Primary Arms on the uh, UTG Leapers Pro uh, Accu something or another. These are great mounts. But in any case, what we're going to do is I'm going to put two rounds on each target with each rifle. And hopefully that will demonstrate how the rifle itself works in symphony. Because what we're trying to do, all right, is we're trying to mitigate this. So the rifle is going to come up a little bit or back and we're going to re-engage. Now another thing this is going to show you, uh, and this is not the trigger test, but merely this is uh, a little look at double taps and you'll see a difference between this trigger and the other trigger. The other one is a Trigger Tech Diamond. Uh, this is the Palmetto State Armory. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm not doing this on timed. I just want to go ahead and double tap each one of those so that we can see what's going on. Here we go. Oh, so there are cameras down range. <laughs> it always never fails. Okay. every one of those would probably be in a zone uh, but what I'm looking for is something that's a little bit closer so let's go ahead and pull that other rifle out and do the same thing on the right hand side stand by all right so one of the things I'm trying to show you and I hope that this will illustrate it is the money well spent but we've got a little bit heavier barrel on this thing we've also got a lot better in my opinion muzzle brake as well as we do have the skeletonized uh, but, uh, what do you call that thing? A bolt carry group and that diamond trigger. So let's see how well this guy can do. Here we go. Damn it. Wow.
with uh, consistently, I think that uh, no. <laughs> Let's try that one more time. I had this thing turned all the way up to eight. Uh, we're gonna do both rifles one more time. I'm trying to prove that this guy's a little bit better. Okay, so here we go, stand by. All right, so I'm gonna keep both of these rifles on two power because that seems to be the best one for me. <laughs> but honestly, I got too much money invested in that other one for it not to work right. This is Econ 1. Oh, I put five rounds in it. Damn it, hold on. I'm gonna start back off with two in the center and then we'll go ahead and do the uh, two on the other ones. All right, not bad. Let's go ahead and pull the other rifle out. Here we go. Okay, so we're on two power with this guy. I'm gonna go ahead and start fresh. Hopefully don't kill my uh, tripods out there. Consistently, I think that uh, we're getting better shot groups with this guy. Uh, so, basically, I'm going to go ahead and give the win <laughs> to Monty. <laughs>